Apache supports virtual hosting under both virtual IPs and also virtual names. For a production site, we should give each site an individual IP address, but in the case of a development server, a lab server, or a test server, we may want to serve multiple sites under the same IP. We're going to start by taking a look at a test site, Matilda. Let's go to the var www.html directory and list the contents. Notice that we're running as the root user in this case. You may need to use the sudo command if you are not running as the root user, in which case you would just type sudo before every command. We can see that we have this Matilda application installed inside of the Apache web directory, which again is var www.html. We can list the contents of this directory and site's code is inside of the directory. When we browse to the site, we type in localhost and then the name of the folder. Inside of the folder is the page. But what if we wanted to make this site act like a production site that had its own IP, own certificate and everything? We would want to access it more something like this. with the name of the site being the domain name portion of the URL. We can use virtual hosts to do this on our development box. So go back over to the terminal and we're going to modify Apache's files. Again, if you're not running as the root user, you'll need to type sudo before each of these commands. We go into the Apache directory, you'll see several folders. The configuration files for the sites is under sites available. Don't modify the files under sites enabled. Sites enabled is for sites that are running. Sites available is the correct place for configuration. Sites enabled is technically some links back to available. And it's possible to get away with modifying through the sim links, but if your editor program crashes or something goes wrong, it can leave the system in a weird state. So it's best to just modify the files directly in sites available. Choose an editor and we're going to open one of the files in sites available. If you want an editor that is more or less like Notepad, you can use gedit. We're going to modify the default configuration file. Inside is the default configuration, and we notice that this is fine, except that it creates that problem earlier where we can't really refer to our site without including that folder into the path because the document root by default is just bar www.html. We're going to replace this default. with our new configuration. And so here what we have is a configuration for port 80 and a configuration for 443. Since this is a development server, I'm specifically saying that we need to access the site over localhost. If you want to be able to access the site remotely, you could use star or you can use your external inter interface's IP address. Star just means any so it would work for both local host and for remote connections. Here's an explanation of a couple of these settings. First of all, AD is the port for HTTP connections. We have the server name directive, and here's where we're going to put the primary name, domain name, if you will, of our site. You can also give aliases if you want. And this is done through the server alias directive. So for example, maybe we just want to call our site Matilda, not Matilda.local. We can give it both names. Here's the key part. We're setting the document root to var 
www.html and then the folder where our project is, in our case Matilde. Now Apache will consider the top of the site to be the Matilde folder, not the HTML folder. Also, instead of using the default value for the error log, I'm going to go ahead and make a custom error log just for this particular site. And we can do that by changing the name of the log. I'll call mine matilda-error.log. The default is error.log. We've done the same for the access file. It's kind of nice to have different logs for different sites if you're going to run multiple sites on the same server. I'm going to copy down the server alias line that we created earlier. I repeat the log files, but I have a new section for SSL. We have directives that turn the SSL on and point to the location of our SSL certificate files. We need to make sure that these point to the actual names of the files. If you're not sure, you can check over on the command line. And we'll set the protocol. You can run multiple protocols if you like. In this case, we're just running TLS version 1. We're going to save the file. We have to restart Apache so that it'll read the file. Now if we go back to the link that we're you, we were using a minute ago, which is localhost, we'll see that it doesn't work anymore. If we remove Matilda from the URL, the folder, and just use localhost only, and then the name of the file in the website, now we find that it works. So we've successfully removed the requirement to specifically specify the Matilda folder or the project folder in the URL itself, and the site is acting a whole lot more like a regular site. Now let's say that we actually wanted to call this matilda.local. Right now this won't work because the Apache server is not going to have a DNS entry for this development site unless we set up a DNS server. But for development you don't necessarily have to set up DNS. What we can do is we can use the host file. Again, we need to use the sudo command to run these commands unless you're already the root user. We're going to modify Etsy host. And we'll add an entry for whatever we want to call our local host server. One of the aliases we used was Matilda, and the other was Matilda.local. We're going to save this file. Now instead of having to type localhost or 127.0.0.1 to get to our development site, we can use those aliases that we created in the host file. For example, matilda.local. Since we used the server alias directive to give a second name, we can also use that, which was just matilda. So by using virtual hosts, we can have our development environments mimic what production environments will act like much more closely but without having to go through the entire production process.